It's taken 66 years, but the Japanese government has offered a personal apology for the harsh treatment of Australian prisoners during the Second World War. Five former diggers, aged in their 80s and 90s, were invited to Japan, among them a doctor and a potato farmer. The country's foreign minister expressed his regret for the pain and suffering the men endured as prisoners at Changi and on the Thai Burma Railway. The men made an emotional pilgrimage to the sites of the Japanese prison camps where they were held. North Asia correspondent Mark Willisey reports from Tokyo. It's a rite meant to pass on good luck. But as these old diggers readily admit, they've already had their fair share of fortune. From prisoners of the Japanese more than six decades ago, today they're honoured guests of the government in Tokyo. Some of my mates said, you wouldn't go there, would you? I said, I would. But I said, they're a different generation of people. They didn't melt shit out of me like the others did. You can't hold the, uh, the present-day Japanese responsible for what you know, their forebears did. <laughs> From welcome guests at a traditional feast at a Shinto shrine. Better than what I got on the line. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> to lauded heroes at an afternoon tea at the Australian Embassy. And some bloody genius worked out a method of sewing a fool's pocket in it, and we used to call it a crutch bag. <laughs> Everywhere these five former POWs have gone in Japan, they've been applauded and honoured. But once it was very different. The five men on this visit were imprisoned in Changi, put in camps in Java, and enslaved on the infamous Thai Burma Railway. Of the more than 22,000 Australians taken prisoner by the Japanese, more than a third died in captivity. The vast majority from lethal brutality, tropical disease, overwork and starvation. A bloke would get depressed, you'd see a look in his eye, and all the medical aid in the world wouldn't have, wouldn't have saved him. With a week or ten days, he was dead. Harold Ramsey survived not only the horrors of the Thai Burma Railway, but also the sinking of the transport ship taking him to Japan. As a doctor, Rolly Richards treated thousands of his fellow POWs in Changi on the Thai Burma Railway and at a camp in northern Japan. I had the power of life and death over all of these men. Uh, I could send them to work and they'd probably die as a result of it. Uh, or uh, I could uh, let try and keep them back in camp and um, give them a chance to live. Having survived the tropical hell of Singapore and the Thai Burma Railway, Rolly Richards and his mates were brought here, to Kata in northern Japan. During a brutal winter, five of the 29 Australian POWs would die. Decades on, Rolly Richards has returned to visit the family of two Japanese he befriended and to revisit the site of his former camp. Like much in post-war Japan, the former camp is long gone. Ironically, it's now a place to relax and enjoy a soothing soak. What are the immediate memories that come back to you standing here at the site of the former camp? Uh, well, I think probably, uh, believe it or not, Matsumoto-san. The Japanese man who yeah. befriended you? Yeah, and <clears throat> also um, Takahashi. Takahashi, the local butcher, and Matsumoto, the camp medic, became firm friends with the Australian prisoner. The two Japanese are now gone, but their families have come to thank Rolly Richards for his friendship and forgiveness. It means a very great deal <coughs> that uh, they've rallied around and they've turned up uh, because <coughs> both Matsumoto and Takahashi were very good friends. I am so moved that the kindness my father showed Dr Richards has bloomed like this. During this visit, there was even an audience with Japan's foreign minister. The first centre-left government in decades has shown a willingness to acknowledge the sins of Japan's wartime past. And after 66 years, what's believed to be an historic first, with the foreign minister offering a face-to-face -face apology for the suffering and pain inflicted on these former POWs. It was a, a deep and uh, expressed great remorse for the suffering that was inflicted on us 
And it was a very moving experience. He said to consider it a formal apology from the government. But for some, it's too little, too late. See, it's an easy way out, isn't it? And it is, would be worthless, absolutely worthless. I believe you have a very different view. Yes, I have a slightly different view. It doesn't affect the younger people, they weren't involved. But it's a recognition of what happened. An apology has certainly come too late for thousands of Australians, like the 250 POWs buried at Hodegaya Cemetery near Tokyo. For these men, this visit is an opportunity to find fallen comrades. Keith Mills, a sailor off the, off the Perth. There was another one with Scotty Haywood. Uh, he was in the army and they both got killed in the air raid and we'd left a few hours before. It's an emotional ending to an extraordinary trip. And for these former POWs, it's full of lessons for future generations. Surely when they look at places like this, what a waste of human life. Hmm. Mark Willisie reporting.